वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स टू द ऑनलाइन लेक्चर ऑन डिज़ाइन ऑफ स्टील स्ट्रक्चर एलिमेंट्स सो लेट अस गो थ्रू वॉट ऑल वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इन द प्रीवियस क्लास सो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट वाटर लेटरली सपोर्टेड बीम्स एंड वी हैव डिस्कस फ्यू ऑफ द स्टेप्स इन्वॉल्व इन द डिज़ाइन ऑफ बीम लाइक लोड कैलकुलेशन क्लासीफिकेशन ऑफ सेक्शन एंड चेक फॉर डिफ्लेक्शन In today's lecture, we will discuss about check for moment resistance of the beam, check for shear, check for web buckling, check for web crippling. So, I would like to just revise in two minutes whatever we had discussed in the previous class. So, this is regarding the classification of section. I had given a brief idea about what is this table about. so this table is used which is on page number 18 to uh, find out which is the section classification depending upon the ratio b by tf and d by gw next we had discussed about the check for deflection so this was the permissible deflection that is span divided by 250 these were the formulas for the standard cases and i had given a note that the load whatever w is taken for the check for deflection is to be unfactored load or not factored load so today our discussions will be on the next points so the first discussion is check for moment resistance of the beam so we have two cases here the first case is if vu less than 0.6 vd and if vu greater than 0.6 vd this vu is nothing but the shear force and vd is nothing but the design shear force so depending upon that we have two different formulas to be used for moment of resistance of the beam so there are two cases remember it so when a shear force is less than 0.6 vd and when the shear force is greater than 0.6 vd so let us take the first case so we are calculating the moment of resistance of the beam so if for the case one if the shear force vu is less than equal to 0.6 vd then the design strength md shall be taken as that is md is equal to beta b zp f y divided by cam now now the cal the formula for this is given on page number 53 is 800 2007 clause number 8.2.1.2 this is page number 53 so clause number 8.1 2.1.2 so i would like to read for you when the factor design shear force does not exceed 0.6 vd where vd is the design shear strength of the cross section the design bending strength md shall be taken as md is equal to beta b z p f y divided by gamma m not where md is nothing but the design bending strength beta b is a ratio which is nothing but one for the plastic section and compact section and for the other section that is semi compact section it is nothing but z d divided by z p where z d and z p are the plastic and elastic section modulus of the cross section f y is nothing but the yield stress of the material gamma m not is nothing but partial factor of safety which you will get in the table number 5 so this criteria is important for the bending strength so the formula that is for the case vu is equal to less than or equal to 0.6 vd the components to solve this the to get the bending strength the formula is given on page number 53 that is this so we have a formula md is equal to beta b z p f y divided by gamma m not md shall be less than this value should be less than 1.2 z d f y divided by gamma m not in case of simply supported b and md is equal to beta b z p f y gamma m not should be less than 1.5 z d f y gamma m not for the cantilever beam case where 
as per the code book i already explained but i would like to tell you once again where beta b is nothing but 1 for the sections plastic and compact for semi compact it is the ratio of this gamma m naught is a partial factor of safety which you will get on page number 30 table number 5 okay so this formula is to be used only when you have va is equal to less than 0.6 vd so i'll show it once again so on page number 53 of is 800 this formula is to be used only when VU is less than 0.6 VD. Let us take the case number 2. What is case number 2? If VU is greater than 0.6 VD. So when the shear force is greater than 0.6 VD, we have one more formula for bending strength, which is given on page number 70, clause number 9.2.2. So I would like to show you in the code book. So on page number 70 here it is clearly given when the factored value for the applied shear force is high that is whatever the ratio v is equal to greater than 0.6 vd then for plastic or compact section md v is given by md minus beta b the this component which should be less than equal to 1.2 zdf divided by gamma m the same thing i have written in the form so this formula comes from that page number. So, what is the formula? MdV is equal to Md minus beta into bracket Md minus Mfd less than equal to 1.2 ZdF divided by gamma M0. So, however I am explaining, please note it down in your notes as well. So, this is the step to be followed to calculate the check for moment of resistance of the P. Next check. So next check is about check for shear, which is given on page number 59, clause number 8.4.1 of IS 800-2007. So I would just like to discuss about that in the code book. Here it is. So, on page number 59 of IC 200 2000, we have a criteria 8.4 that is shear. So, what is shear? The factor design shear force V in a beam due to external actions shall satisfy V less than or equal to VD, where VD is design strength, which is given by Vn divided by gamma M0. So, the nominal strength Vn may be governed by plastic shear resistance or strength of the web as governed by the shear buckling. Again, this Vd is nothing but Vn divided by gamma M0. This Vn is given here. Vn is equal to Vp, where Vp is equal to Av Fyw divided by rho 3. That is where Av is nothing but shear area. Fyw is nothing but yield strength of the web. So, this is the criteria for checking for shear and this is the formula. So, what I have done, I have made a single formula wherein directly it takes into account this component also, this component also, this component also. So, let us see how we have done it. So, check for shear Vd is equal to Vn divided by gamma M0 where this component Vn is nothing but Av Fyw upon root 3. So, I can write Vd, Vd is equal to Fy divided by root 3 gamma Mw into Av. So, uh, this, this component is into, into Av. I have purposely separated it out where because this Av is very important. This is nothing but the shear area. So, what is the shear area? It is nothing but the thinnest area. So, it is so W because we are most probably calculating the shear for the web portion as we have W component here. So, area of shear area should also consist of W. So, the shear area is calculated by nothing but H into TW. Now, as I have already shown in the classification H into TW. So, this is H and this is Tw. 
so moreover we are moreover considered about this portion so we have taken h into the thickness of w which gives the shear area and note what is the note here because we are checking for shear so you should know whether it is above or below the section whether it is safe or no for the section to be safe vd should be greater than vo that means this value when you calculate after substituting the shear area should be greater than the shear force calculated then the section will be safe so this is check for shear let us move on to the next check so next check is nothing but check for web buckling so this is with regards to web portion web portion lies here so if i divide this is the flange top flange this is the bottom flange this is web so we are interested in web portion so you can see the web portion is very thin so just as in case of the refill which i had demonstrated in the earlier part in the earlier lecture i would like to demonstrate it once again you can see here the web portion is very thin so just like a refill so this will just like a, as a thin section so what will happen when the loading is done it tends to buckle it tends to buckle so we need to check it for web buckling so how do we check there is a provision given and a guidelines given as on case of page number 67 clause number 8.7.3.1 in is 800 2007 so let us go to page number 67 of the is code book so you can see here page number 67 and we have to go to this component that is check for web check if you see the formula so the buckling strength i have made a single formula out of it buckling strength is given by fwp is equal to b1 plus n1 into tw into fc where n1 is nothing but h by 2 h is nothing but the total depth of the section so n1 should be taken as h by 2 so this is over h by 2 b1 being the bearing bearing value which i will be explaining you in the next uh, step tw is thickness of the flange fc now the most important is fc fc is nothing but critical stress which can be taken as fcd that is nothing but design compressive stress so let us go back on the clause so in the clause you can see here you can uh, see here so this is given by this is the formula which is to be taken so the area of cross section is to be taken as b1 plus n1 into tw the same thing which i have written it here b1 plus n1 into tw so this is area when you multiply it with fc we will get the strength we will get the strength that is fc dw but i have given it as fwp so this fc is nothing but the critical stress which is given here so fc d is nothing but i will read it for you load carrying web stiffener should be provided where compressive forces applied through a flange by loads or reaction exceeds the buckling strength fc d the effective length of the web for evaluating the slenderness ratio is calculated according to this clause the area of cross section is this so this is the area which is taken and when you multiply this component with fc we will get the bending strength or a buckling strength so this is a buckling strength formula so this fc is nothing but critical stress and that can be taken as fcd which is design compressive stress now how do we get this uh, fcd we can take it from the table number 9c page 42 so let us go to page number 42 so i will just like to explain so this is page number 42 and this is the table number that is table number 9c which gives you the design compressive stress fcd now i have used the notation fcd so that it becomes easier for you to refer the table okay so what we have in this table we are calculating fcd so what we require 
in the horizontal component we have fi yield stress fi m m in terms of mpa that is newton per m square and in vertical we have kl by r this component is nothing but slenderness ratio so this is given here so slenderness ratio is given by 2.5 into d divided by d so we will get the lambda value so in this table this is nothing but the lambda value this is nothing but the lambda value so we have a number of values here here we have horizontal component that is fy so fy we are taking it as 250 newton per m square so this is the 250 newton per m square once we get the value of lambda say for example if i get value of lambda as 100 so 100 against 100 against this one that is 250 so my value of fcd is 107 newton per m square just i gave an example how to take the value of fcd once you get the value of fcd this value of fcd has to be substituted here once we substitute here we already have thickness of web n1 i have already told you s divided by 2 so b1 is nothing but the bearing component or a bearing uh, part of the member so we will get the value of fp w now go, we will go to the next part of the check for web that is check for web crippling so this is nothing but again just like a refill when i told you it may happen that when we apply a force this is a thin portion of i section so it will, it may happen that this may cripple so for that also a clause is given so that is on page number 67 IS 800 2007 clause 8.7.4. So let us see what is that formula. So this is page number 67 and this is the component crippling so this is the formula so this is the formula used for the web crippling check for web crippling that is fw is equal to b1 plus n2 into tw fy divided by gamma m0 where b1 is nothing but the stiff bearing length n2 is nothing but length obtained by the dispersion through 45 degrees dispersion through the 45 degrees that is flange of the web junction at a slope of 1 is to 2.5 to the plane of the flange tw again is the thickness of the web fyw is nothing but yield stress of the web this formula i have written it here in the chart so this formula is being taken from page number 67 so bearing strength is equal to fw is equal to b1 plus n2 into tw divided by fyw divided by gamma m0 now again the component in the previous formula we had n1 which is nothing but s divided by 2 in this we have n2 how to calculate this whatever will be the depth multiply it with the slope considering the slope 1 is to 2.5 will get this now this b1 is same here and in the above formula in the previous formula this b1 represents to the bearing length so what is bearing length so we have two components here full bearing half bearing what do you mean by full bearing when the beam this is a beam when it is resting over either walls or a column and if it is resting like this component then you can see it the beam is being rested over the full portion of full width of the column or a wall so in such case we call it as full bearing so this b1 will be substituted as this value let us check in half bearing when a beam is supported over column or a wall in such fashion so you can see it is not fully placed over the column or the wall so, so in such cases we use only this portion as b1 so this is half bearing so you should always remember how the beams are being supported whether the beam is being supported towards the full width of the uh, wall or a beam column or the beam is supported towards the half of the beam or column suppose if this width is thickness of wall, wall is 230 mm then in such this case b1 will be 230 mm suppose if the beam is resting over this in such a portion half portion so the b1 will be taken as 230 divided by 2 
so remember so this is very important so we have discussed today about check for moment of resistance we have discussed about check for shear check for web buckling and check for web crippling i request you all to go through the clauses and this whatever i have written please note it down go through the clauses go through the formulas i have made few changes keeping in the view of is 800 2007 to make easier for you i have made this formula and written it here i have explained all the components and all the check so this completes the steps involved in the design of laterally supported beams so please go through all the checks and all the steps thoroughly go through the code book provision read the clauses in my next lecture we will take up one numerical example and we will solve using these steps and we will check and we will learn how to use or apply these formula for checking the beam whether it is stable or no or whether it is safe or no so uh, for today this much is uh, sufficient so i have covered all these steps so please go through the clauses so thank you so i would like to uh, tell that please i have already shared a uh, sp6 and i set under 2007 i set under 2007 is for referring the clauses and the purpose of sharing sp6 is because those who don't have steel table they can make the use of sp6 because the steel table has been taken out from sp6 itself so all the properties of sections are available please if you are having steel table go through the steel table and the sections if not go through the soft copy of sp6 which i have shared in that you will find the sections in the next class or a next lecture we will solve a numerical example so i will be requiring i s 800 2007 as well as the steel table or the sp6 to sp6 for the classification of the section and the physical properties of the section so thank you all for the today's uh, session please uh, feel free to clear your doubts and please make a brief notes about the steps and give the explanation thank you thank you one and all